Welcome to our session today on understanding the benefits of migrating from safe workplace to workplace service delivery. We're really looking forward to our session and sharing a lot of great content. If we haven't met yet, my name is Allison, and I am part of our outbound product management group here at ServiceNow. I specifically sit within our employee workflows team, and I focus on our workplace service delivery products. So I am very much looking forward to today's discussion and sharing a lot of goodness on our product. Um, I've been at ServiceNow for about three years now, and a fun fact that I like to share is that I have a previous life as a ServiceNow customer and as a ServiceNow implementation consultant. So shout out to all of our attendees who are listening in. I know several of you, I recognize your names, and I know you primarily fall into those two personas. Um, I'm also joined by one of my awesome colleagues, Jordan. So Jordan, I will pass it over to you to say hello and introduce yourself. Wonderful, Allison. Thank you so much. My name is Jordan Wechter, and I have the privilege of sitting on the Employee Workflows Product and Solutions Marketing Team here at ServiceNow, and also had the privilege of joining into the company about two years ago to launch this product, Workplace Service Delivery, that we're here to talk about today. So my career path has had some specialization and new product introductions, so thrilled to share some of that innovation here with you today and connect with each and every one of you. So glad to have you here. Awesome. Thank you, Jordan. So now what I want to do before we dig into our content is I have a couple of housekeeping items that I want to cover. Um, so first off, all of you are muted by default, but just a friendly reminder to please stay on mute during the duration of our session just to eliminate any background noises or distractions. And although you will all remain on mute, we absolutely want to hear from you. So if you have a question at any time, please type your question into that Q&A panel that you'll see in the Zoom webinar. And we have time reserved at the end to cover those and discuss live. Um, we'd also love to know who you are. So if you submit a question, please feel to introduce yourself and where you're from, just so we know who we're speaking with in the Q&A. And the other thing I want to point out is that we will be sharing a recording of our session back to community after today's session. So no need to take vigorous notes. You can feel free to listen and record back to the recording once that's up if you missed anything. And you'll also receive a survey at the end of our session today. So um, I know we all receive a lot of surveys, but please do take the time to fill that out. We're always looking for feedback on our content and we want to make sure that these sessions are as useful as possible. So please keep an eye out for that survey as well. The other thing I want to highlight and make you all aware of is that this webinar is, of course, part of a Live on Now series. I'm sure many of you are familiar with that. And we have another really great session coming up on July 19th, specifically digging into our Map Studio, which is a capability of our workplace indoor mapping application. So I really wanted to highlight this event. We're very much looking forward to this. And this will be a bit more in depth in terms of how to actually do things like import maps and create and manage directions. So please register for that if you're not already. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about now that we've gone through housekeeping and that other webinar is our agenda for the day. So first, what we're going to do is Jordan's going to walk us through the purpose of workplace service delivery versus safe workplace. Um, then what I'll do is I'm going to take us through an app by app overview so everyone understands specifically what applications are part of which suite and what they do. Then we're going to carry that conversation forward and I'm going to talk about the overlap that we have between safe workplace and workplace service delivery and what this means for you as a customer or an implementation partner in terms of implementation that actually jumps jump starts and expedites a couple of things. Um, then before we close out, we have a couple of additional resources we want to direct you to. And then, of course, like I mentioned before, we will have time dedicated at the end for Q&A. So as a reminder, like I mentioned, if you have any questions throughout the session, feel free to place them in that Q&A area in the Zoom, and we'll take a look during that portion. All right, so now on to our content. So like I mentioned, Jordan is going to take us through this session. So Jordan, over to you for this part of our agenda. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Allison, and for that wonderful housekeeping and introduction. Oh, I said welcome and thank you all again for joining us here today. You know, as employee experience professionals, many of us are familiar with the fact that where work gets done and how work gets done has inevitably changed. All of us throughout the environment have been managing how to go through for our organization and adjust these changes for our employees, implement new ways of working, and really being funneled by the tailwinds of the past two years of the pandemic and so much information that surrounded this. So one of the things that we know for sure is that with these shifts, employee expectations have shifted as well. Digital transformation is continuing to accelerate. 
throughout all of our organizations. If we move forward in, in the slides, Allison, essentially we, we're hearing from customers like yourself that they're trying to look at things like unlocking the power of different utilization data in their workplaces, understanding things like capacity, reimagining these workplace experiences, increasing things like visibility or even automation of the processes that are there. And although safety is not at the forefront of the conversation anymore, we still do know that safety and compliance within our workplaces is highly important important. And it's not lost on those investments that have been made in products like Safe Workplace and all the learnings that we've taken over the past two years. We will continue to elevate employee and workplace experiences and evolve and innovate on those flexible working models. And we're here to dive a little bit further into those conversations with you today. So a few things that we know, and this is a double click slide, we'll go one, two for some of those stats, is that a Microsoft study actually found that 30% of employees say that new ways of working have increased their burnout. You know, Allison used this reference if you had the privilege of joining us at our Knowledge Live events that were happening across the world. And she used the phrase that her office was conveniently located between the kitchen and her bedroom. And that makes it really hard to unplug and unwind at the end of the day. I know many of you, like myself, I'm constantly coming back. I'm responding to emails between things. I'm logging onto my laptop, sometimes even a little earlier or a little later. So although in this new world of work, we do have some things of more flexibility, we're also always available. And then on the other side of the story, we have people like frontline workers who have always been in and present and on the front lines. And their jobs were already challenging, but now in the evolution and the tailwinds of things that have been going on, their jobs have become even more complicated with higher stakes and they're more complex for the issues that they're trying to navigate through. And you apply that with the adjuncts positioning of them seeing some of their other colleagues or friends who have more flexible working environments and they say, well, why can't I have that for me? So these new ways of working ultimately have led to more increase in employee burnouts. The other side of the table, some of the things that we see is that actually these massive generational shifts are going to force over 75% of organizations to evaluate and adapt some form of a hybrid flexible working model. That might mean two days in the office, multiple days home. Maybe it's just having an office as a home base, but really increasing things for collaboration and those points of purpose that really lead our colleagues and ourselves back into the workplace. Something that I found was interesting, spanning across multiple generations from millennials, Gen Z to Gen X, all these workers cited that they actually had that increase in, in productivity because of the flexibility that's come into way. If you think to the last slide and then also going into this one, that makes sense. If my office is conveniently located between the kitchen and the bedroom, I'm going to be able to be more available. I'm going to be chatting with my colleagues and teams more. And that flexibility allows me to pick up the kids from after school daycare, the same as maybe getting in that 12 o'clock workout that you wouldn't have had otherwise, should you be so privileged. So we had a poll for the group, and we wanted to just kind of do a little bit of a, of a test with, with the waters of those who are in attendance and ask, what workplace products are you currently licensed for with ServiceNow? Are you on our safe workplace solution? Are you on safe workplace professional, workplace service delivery? You're unsure or none of the products. And we'll give this just a couple minutes here for, for those votes to come in. Awesome. All right, I'm still seeing some of them trickle in. That's good. We've got a couple folks, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, hopefully this will be good and educational for everyone today as we walk through the additional information for some of these applications. As Allison mentioned, the purpose of workplace service delivery versus safe workplace and given some good information to you all today. All right, we're gonna give it about five more seconds. Let's go ahead. All right, let's share those results. 
So we see that the majority of people are either unsure, none. We have a good amount of folks that are on the workplace service delivery product and safe workplace. And this is actually very beneficial because we're going to clearly identify some of those differences from our safe workplace skew into moving into the workplace service delivery licensing. And hopefully for those teams that are unsure or for none, this gives you some great core information to bring back to your teams and be able to engage with some of your folks. All right. So the evolution of our product offerings, as, as we just spoke between safe workplace and workplace service delivery, one of the things that was so cool and innovative as I as joining the company here at ServiceNow was understanding that when we launched our safe workplace solution into market early in 2020, a lot of these core capabilities, such as the simplified desk bookings that were available on there, a little bit more of the CAD drawings that, that it were in existence and things around safety or testing, these were actually already being built to be a part of our workplace service delivery solution. And due to the pressures in the market and the evolution of the world and customer needs, we actually had decided that it was urgent and a need to go into market early with a product that we branded and called Safe Workplace in order to help customers like yourself remove things like manual processes of tracking your vaccination status or finding an automated way to report on health and safety tests in the workplace and safely reopen for some of those folks that were frontline organizations like Yara Valley Water who had to continue to provide critical infrastructure. Moving into the workplace service delivery product, this is all about being able to support those flexible work environments, ensuring that our workplaces are dynamic, they're adjustable, we're providing things on the employee experience layer, the same as we're providing things for our space administrators and our facilities admins and connecting those experiences. So what does this mean? Essentially, we are shifting in the workplace from it being a place of habit to it actually becoming a place of purpose. In the past, we were in at 8 a.m. To, to 5 or 4 or 9 to 5. And now we're finding that so many of our colleagues and even other organizations we're speaking to like yourselves, the workplace has become much more of a place of purpose. We have a sales offsite that's happening. We have a company all hands that's coming into play. We want everyone to travel in so that we can have a team connection. So this conversation has really shifted from returning safely to the workplace, which our safe workplace product offering catered to, into defining what is that new hybrid workplace. And each organization is going to be different. There's no one size fits all that goes to this. Some people won't be as flexible of working environments, where some people it'll fully be that the workplace is a place of purpose. But what this ends up meaning, if we dive into the two different personas that this caters into, is that the workplace service delivery product, and here at ServiceNow, we're putting a different lens on how we're viewing our people and our places experiences. And I wanted to quickly walk through the strategy with each of you to make sure that this was clear in an understanding of the purpose of these product offerings. On the left-hand side of the slide, one of the first things that the workplace service delivery product aims to do is to be the system of engagement for your workplace. This is talking all about that employee experience. We know that you need to provide a front door to the enterprise for your, for your colleagues, for your employees to be able to access things like knowledge articles, flexible working policies, and even having a single source of truth to create their service requests or submit their health and safety screenings, and even get all the things that they need leading up to the workplace entry. And then when they're joining you into the workplace, we know we need to provide a consumer grade reservation experience. This looks like being able to reserve desks, conference rooms, or even if Allison and I are coming in to collaborate together, adding on things like catering or service requests or setting up the rooms such as a classroom style because that's our needs for the day. In addition, I mentioned early on, I joined ServiceNow in the wake of the pandemic. So like many folks, we have not been in an office before. So this is where we also provide map visualization to be able to wayfind around office spaces all from our mobile phones to colleague to colleague within the workplace or even identifying where that collaboration room is that we're going to need. 
And then we get to that collaboration room and maybe we find that the coffee pot is broken outside and the thermostat, ooh, it is just too cold in here. Now I need a simple and easy way, clicking even right from the floor map, to submit that service request and connect with my facilities and workplace teams. That's our experience layer for the workplace on the left-hand side. All of this utilization data, all of the employee sentiment around these experiences, these all feed back into the second category, which is our right hand of the slide, which is more of our facilities, our real estate, and our workplace team persona. This it now aims to be the system of record for space. And this is all about space optimization in the wake of the changes, not only of the last two years, but a statistic from Gartner actually found that organizations pre-pandemic shift their workplaces more than 40% and had underutilization. Now you think in the standpoint, if we do have these flexible working environments, we need things like that core space data to come into play in order to better understand our capacity, our utilization of the workplace, and then moving into things like planning for our spaces. How are we gonna rearrange our stack plans? Maybe we need to move the marketing team from the third floor down to the first, or why do we have all the TVs and the AC running for the top 10 floors of our building if we're not seeing any colleagues coming into there? Into larger things like bulk moves or mass moves, or easily even being able to request something like an employee move coming into play. And then all of this core space data then feeds back into that employee experience. And I wanted to reiterate that this is something that in market right now, we're seeing for many of our customers, it's handled by multiple point tools. In some cases, we've seen over 20 tools being used for, from our customers for creating a reservation and then having a map and then managing our space and our utilization, let alone things like maintenance and assets. And so what this aims to do is to create that single layer for our customers like yourself so that these systems can actually become connected. Our employees and our workplace teams are no longer siloed. It provides full visibility and connection of these experiences throughout the workplace, whether you're on the employee persona side or you are on the administrative side of your workplace experience. And with that being said, I am now going to shift it back over to Allison, who is going to give us an app by app overview of our workplace service delivery solution, as well as covering through the safe workplace investments. Allison, over to you. All right. Thank you so much, Jordan. So like Jordan just mentioned, we are going to transition to this next portion of our agenda, which is the app by app overview. And during this section, I guess before we get started to help orient kind of this conversation, I wanted to run a poll. I wanted to get a quick poll from the group on what some of your top workplace initiatives are over the next six to 12 months. So similar to the previous poll that we ran, you should now see kind of a Zoom pop up um, and you'll be able to submit your vote. But you can see some of the options here are completely automating your workplace services, driving cost and space efficiencies, streamlining points tools for better connected visibility. So this goes back directly to that comment that Jordan was just making around how unique workplace service delivery is and how a lot of our prospects and customers are actually using several point solutions to kind of accommodate the different use cases that they have. Maybe you're trying to redefine your employee and workplace experience, or uh, maybe there's something else that's on your mind. We'd love to hear from you. So we'll leave this going for a couple more seconds. We have a good amount of participants who have responded, but if you haven't, I'll give you a little bit more time. It looks like so far the winner is redefining the employee and workplace experience, which absolutely resonates. That's not surprising. Uh, the second top contender it keeps changing as people uh, continue to vote is other. So it might be curious if you're one of the uh, people who selected other, we'd love to hear from you in the chat on what other uh, initiatives you may have top of mind. Give it a couple more seconds for answers to trickle in. All right, we can go ahead and end the poll and share the results. I think I've given the recap, but you can kind of review those quickly. Um, again, like I said, that redefining the employee and workplace experience uh, option was our top. Great, okay, so now what I wanna do is get started in the overview. And what I'm gonna do during this section, of course, is walk through all of the applications that you see here um, and really provide an overview to make sure that everyone has a solid understanding of what these applications truly do and what they mean to your organization. And so first on the list, I'm actually gonna talk about our Safe Workplace Suite. And I assume many of you listening, and we know from the poll that 
you are, um, are, you know, already using some of these applications, or maybe you are an implementation partner and you've by now implemented these applications for several customers. So as Jordan was reviewing this content, really what she was reinforcing again is that this suite is all about keeping employees safe. So you'll see a lot of the applications have that context. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep this app by app overview relatively quick because we'll spend most of our time on our workplace service delivery applications. But here, first on the list, we have contact tracing. So, of course, what this enables you to do is conduct contract tracing to pinpoint exposures of employees and leverage various data elements within the workplace to help drive that. This also entails vaccination status. So this is what allows you to collect and verify those employees submitted vaccination statuses, and it allows you to accommodate workflows for other things like exemption requests. Next on the list, we have health and safety testing. So this really provides a framework to prompt employees to take tests. And so a specific use case here would be prompting exposed employees to obtain a test. Maybe they've been identified as an exposed contact as part of contact tracing, and you need to make sure that they're not testing positive and that it's safe for them to re-enter the workplace. Uh, the next app as part of this suite is travel safety. So this keeps employees safe during travel, of course, and it allows you to do things like trigger travel approval requests. Next, we have employee readiness surveys. So this is really allowing you to get some insight into the sentiment of your employees to check in with them on how they're feeling and their readiness. Next, we have employee health screening. So this provides the ability for you to actually screen employees for symptoms before they come on site so they can be cleared for entry. And next, we have workplace safety management. So this is really what allows you to manage those arrival protocols with things like shifts, as well as cleaning tasks to make sure that your spaces are kept clean. And next on the list is workplace PPE inventory management. So as you might guess by the name of this application, this allows you to manage your PPE inventory. And the nice thing is that this spans across all of your locations or different locations have different needs and it allows you to make sure that you're stocked and employees have access to whatever they may need at that location. Next, we have the Safe Workplace Dashboard. So this is a dashboard that essentially serves as kind of a command center to allow you to get an overview of the status for certain campuses. So there are things like the sentiment for that location, the vaccination rates, the confirmed COVID-19 cases and more. But again, this is really giving you that bird's eye view for that campus. The next thing that we also see on the list is around um, performance analytics. So I'm gonna jump around a little bit and talk about that next because that actually directly applies to what we need within the Safe Workplace Dashboard in terms of enabling some of those reports. The other thing that I'll cover is that we also have that employee readiness core application. Um, the reason I'm saving this for the end is that this is actually a core app that includes shared functionality and data structures and across this entire suite. So now what I wanna do is I wanna jump and talk about the rest of our applications. So again, I kind of walked through those fast that those are the apps that are included within Safe Workplace, but now I'm gonna expand and talk about the other applications that are included within workplace service delivery. Um, and so what I've done for the remainder of our slides is I have grouped the applications um, by two, and I've also broken out the capabilities that we'd like to speak about in the context of two primary personas. And this actually goes back to that strategy slide that Jordan walked us through. So first, we're going to talk about these applications from the persona of that workplace team perspective, and then we're going to dive into it from the employee perspective. So of course, as we can see next on our list, we have employee center and workplace case management. And these are two applications that really help keep employees informed and connected with a multi-departmental portal. So what this means for you, if you are part of that workplace team, is that you are now able to surface and manage all of your workplace information. And what that's doing is it's driving self-service. And in terms, it's actually deflecting cases from coming into your team because you're actually surfacing that information in an easy to way find uh, for your employees. The other thing that you're able to do if you're part of this workplace team persona is you're able to fulfill service requests efficiently related to the workplace. And so you have all of the robust capabilities that many of you are likely familiar with in terms of case management on ServiceNow. So you can do things like create tasks, create checklists for your fulfillers and automate this to really standardize that process and drive efficiency. If you're an employee, what this means for you is you're able to now quickly get help and order services. And the nice thing about this, again, is that this is surfacing on Employee Center, which is typically that multi-department service portal and kind of system of engagement and front door to the enterprise, as Jordan was mentioning. So you don't really have to think about where to go for help or how to contact your workplace team. It's just made available to you in a very consumer grade experience. The other thing that I want to dive into a little bit deeper. So we talk about the ability for you to quickly get help and order services. 
More specifically, what you're able to do as an employee from Employee Center would be search. So you can search the knowledge base and search what catalog items are available to you. You can also use our virtual agent chatbot to help connect you to resources or even connect you to conversations that help you transact. Perhaps you even want to make a reservation. That's something that you can use virtual agent to do. And the other great thing that you can do if you are an employee is you can actually browse our workplace topic pages. So that's actually what we're looking at in the screenshot on the left of this slide. This is one of our workplace topic pages. And if you haven't heard of a topic page, this is actually a capability and it's one of my favorite capabilities within Employee Center. What this allows you to do as an organization is really structure the taxonomy of all of your different types of content. So whether it is a knowledge article, a quick link, a service catalog item, and it allows you to drive this taxonomy, tag your content to it, and then it dynamically generates these pages that really unlock this browsing experience for your employees. We know some employees like to search, some employees like to use a chat bot, but some people are just browsers and they'd like to have a page presented to them with all of their different options that are available. So again, these are kind of the capabilities that are unlocked from that employee persona perspective. The next apps that I wanna talk about are workplace reservation management and workplace indoor mapping. So really what these applications are doing, we're connecting employees with the workplace for self-service of reservations, navigation and wayfinding, and what we call service add-ons. So first up, if you are part of that workplace team, what this means for you is that this is allowing you to really create flexibility with workplace reservations. This is a very big topic now more than ever with a lot of employees deciding to work from home and electing to go into the workplace for certain days of the week. A lot of our customers and the workplace teams are kind of wondering, how do I operationalize this? There's all of this talk about hybrid work, but how do you actually create structure and organization and an experience for your employees to actually elect when they'd actually determine to come in? And the answer here is reservation management. Um, we have a lot of really robust capabilities within res reservation management, but a couple of ones that I want to highlight specifically that are newer and really kind of catering to the current reality. Um, one is support for hybrid meetings. So this is a newer capability that actually allows you to indicate um, a hybrid meeting provider like Teams or Zoom. And what that does is it associates that meeting link directly within your reservation uh, that you're creating to allow virtual attendance. Um, we also have this new capability around favoriting spaces. So what we know about employees and even ourselves is that we tend to be creatures of habit. We tend to like to sit in the same spot or use the same room, we have preferences. And so this concept of favoriting really helps drive that personalization for your employees so they can favorite and quickly access those same spaces or locations to quickly make a reservation. The other thing that I wanna highlight in the context of workplace teams related to these applications is the fact that this really helps you operationalize your process for service add-ons. So we've talked a bit in passing about service add-ons, but really what this means is it's connecting workplace reservation management with workplace case management. So the examples that we've talked through would be, let's say you're creating a reservation and you're creating a reservation for multiple people. And the intent of that is actually collaboration. And you want to request a certain room configuration. Maybe you want the furniture to be arranged in a classroom style, or maybe it is a working lunch meeting and you need to request catering, or maybe it's even a team building event and you want to request some uh, team building blocks for your team to kind of use as your team building exercise. The list goes on, but again, this is really connecting that concept of reservations and directly embedding the, the service delivery aspect. The other thing that's really big to talk about from the workplace team perspective in the context of these two applications is the ability to design, edit, and manage indoor maps. So this one very directly correlates to workplace indoor mapping. And one thing that I wanna highlight about this um, before I go much further is that we're very excited about this application. It's actually our newest application as part of the workplace service delivery suite. And it is the result of an acquisition that we made last year. So we purchased a third party mapping technology. We took that technology, we platformed it, and now it's natively part of this application. And one of the really great capabilities of this app is something called Map Studio. So this is actually what allows your workplace teams or your map admins to take your CAD files, import those in, and create these really great mapping experiences for your employees. So that's where you would do things like manage your directions and your points of interest. And of course, that's what ultimately powers that experience for employees in the context of wayfinding or even making visual-based reservations. Taking that a step further, again, if you are an employee, like I mentioned, you are able to use these interactive maps for navigation. Um, you're also able to raise an inquiry. So let's say you're in a space and something's wrong or you need help or you have a question, you're actually able to use the map, click on that space that you're in and open that inquiry directly. 
Another thing that I'd like to mention regarding kind of how employees interact with workplace indoor mapping goes back to something that Jordan alluded to earlier, and it's this concept of finding your colleagues. So we know right now that a lot of times the compelling reason for employees to visit the workplace is to collaborate and see other people. And so one of the very powerful things that you can do as an employee with workplace indoor mapping is use this map visualization to actually find from where you are to where your coworker is sitting, how to actually navigate and find them within the workplace, which again is very powerful in that context of collaboration and connecting two people who are in the same space. The other thing, of course, that I'd like to point out from that employee persona is the ability to submit and track reservations. So this correlates to workplace reservation management. And the nice thing about this is that you can you know, submit a reservation for, let's say, a meeting room, a desk, a locker, a parking spot. The list goes on. The way that we have created this application is in a very flexible way. So there's a framework where your admin team or your workplace team can really define what should be reservable. And so this is very flexible, like I mentioned, in terms of the things that you can reserve. The next thing I want to talk about is workplace space management and workplace move management. So this is all about driving efficient use of your space and easily moving employees from one location to another location. So um, first off, if you're a part of that workplace team, what this means for you is that you have a mechanism for capturing your core space data and you have a system of record for your space. So this includes several data elements, that core space data. In addition, you also have some other capabilities around storing your measurement for your space. So maybe the total square footage of a room, as well as your building, um, associating cost centers and departments to a space and more. The other thing that you can do as part of the, that workplace team persona is manage the end-to-end -end life cycle of a space. So I like to give some examples on this one to just add color context. So an example is, let's say you're actually planning for a new space that's not yet opened, and you have kind of some planning that you need to conduct, and you have an idea for when that planned open date might be. That's something that you would be able to control with this capability. On the flip side of that, let's say you're actually um, planning some construction and you need to temporarily pause um, usage of a space, or maybe you're actually considering retiring a space. You had kind of a core use case for a certain space, and now that has um, move to a new um, kind of vision that you would like to use that space for something else. That's something that you also drive with that concept of managing that space life cycle from end to end as it progresses. The other thing that's really important to understand, and Jordan alluded to this earlier, is this ability to gain insight into how your space is actually being utilized. So we know that nearly all organizations right now are in this point of inflection where they're looking at all of their real estate and they're looking at all of their space and they're trying to determine right now how is this actually being used by our employees, especially now that we're in this new era of work where again space is not being used in the same way. And so with this application, what you're able to do is better understand, again, your utilization. And a lot of that is informed by what we have within reservation management. The other aspect to call out, and again, this one directly ties back to workplace move management, is this concept of managing employee moves. So the example that I like to give here is let's say you have several floors that you are managing as part of your workplace location, and you actually determine that no one is really using space in the same way, so you have an opportunity to completely remove one of these floors. Um, maybe you're leasing it and you're going to eliminate that. As part of that, you're actually going to need to move employees, but we know that the movement of employees has a lot of activity involved in it. Um, and so this really helps drive that workflow and moves the employee as well as any um, workplace items that they need moved as well. On the flip side of that, from the employee perspective, um, a lot of times those moves are driven by your organization, but let's say your organization also wants to allow employees to be able to submit a seat change. What this would allow you to do is essentially go to that employee center uh, portal, again, that front door to the enterprise, and you'd be able to actually use that form to designate and request a move. So let's say you have a seat assignment today and you're kind of in a corner, maybe it's not well lit, you're not getting a lot of interaction. You want to actually submit a request to move near a window or maybe you want to move near the kitchen where there are a lot of coworkers passing by because you're a very social person. What this would allow you to do again from that employee perspective is submit that seat change request and elect specifically what you would like to have moved. Next on the list is workplace visitor management. So really this is all about driving a seamless experience for visitors who are joining on site, for your reception staff, and for your employees who are serving as that host persona. 
So if you are a workplace team, what this means for you is you're really able to optimize your front desk operations. So this means you're able to view an activity log of who is visiting, as well as have access to a reception dashboard. And that's really your command center for all of these different activities that are happening in relation to visitors. One of the other great things that you're able to do if you're part of that workplace team is you're able to define visitor policies that can be accepted. So a lot of times our customers have very specific policies that visitors need to accept, and those may even vary from location to location. And so what this application allows you to do is define those visitor policies and even trigger that to the visitor before their visit so that acceptance is taken care of. The other really great thing that you're able to do as a workplace team is you can even do things like print visitor badges for easy identification. So let's say once that visitor is on site, once they're checked in, that reception staff could have a button that they use to click to print those visitor badges directly. Uh, now, if you're an employee, what this means for you is you're able to register visitors in advance and plan for what they need upon arrival, depending on who they are, maybe they're a contractor and they need specific access to an area, or maybe they need specific Wi-Fi access. Those are things that, again, you can pre-plan as their host. The other thing that you can do, which is nice, is you can add co-hosts. So let's say during the arrival period for that visitor, you may be in another meeting and you're worried that you're not going to be able to go down and welcome them. You could add a co-host who's a colleague who could go pick them up. And you can even add special notes to the reception staff for considerations on this specific visit. All right, so that was my last slide on the app by app overview. But what I want to do again is check in with the group. So now I'd like to hear from all of you on how familiar you already were with that information. Um, I know some of you have already implemented these applications, so I would expect that your poll result would be um, quite familiar, but just curious to kind of get some quick feedback from the, the full group who's listening in. And as a reminder, you should now see that pop up in the Zoom. So, so far we see to a great extent, which is great. And then some of you have answered with somewhat, um, a couple answers with very little. So far, not, not anyone has said not at all. So that's awesome to hear that there's that general uh, level of awareness across what these applications do. Let this go for a couple more seconds. It looks like answers are still trick trickling in. All right, it looks like we can go ahead and close the poll. And again, the winner here is somewhat with a good split between to a great extent and very little. Well, hopefully this session um, in terms of the app by app overview is still helpful to everyone and you got a little bit more familiar with things maybe that you weren't already aware of. All right, so now what I want to do, I want to dig in now that we've talked about kind of all of the different applications, I want to talk a little bit more about um, the overlap. So I want to talk about, you know, what this means in terms of safe workplace and workplace service delivery, especially in the context of expediting implementations if you're considering upgrading. And so first what I want to do, I want to start by talking about what applications are actually included with which solution. And what I'm going to do for this, I'm actually going to start on the far left of the slide and I'm going to work my way over to the right. And so starting with safe workplace suite, I won't kind of repeat my list of applications since we went through that in the app by app overview. But again, as a refresher, Safe Workplace Suite includes those apps like vaccination status, contact tracing, employee health screening. Again, very focused on keeping employees safe in the workplace and operationalizing that return process. Uh, next, if we move to the middle of the slide, we have Safe Workplace Suite Pro. So this uh, suite actually includes everything that Safe Workplace Suite contains, but it gives you some additional access to some of our other applications. So you can see here under the list, we have reservation management, visitor management, a couple of ap other applications. It also gives access to indoor mapping, which again is that new um, application that we just released in May that was a re result of that acquisition. And then finally, if you look all the way over to the far right, we have our workplace service delivery suite. So of course, this is our most premium application and solution, and it contains everything that you see under Safe Workplace Suite, everything that you see under Safe Workplace Suite Pro, plus some additional applications. So those additional applications that you get access to with workplace service delivery would be first up case management. So again, as a refresher, this is all about connecting employees to the workplace teams and helping drive those efficient fulfillments of service requests. And that even ties back to those reservations that we were talking about in the context of those add-ons. The other capability that this unlocks is those more robust space management capabilities. So this is really what allows you to very much 
think strategically about your space and it provides you again with that system of record for your space so you can monitor utilization and drive those longer term optimizations because again we know now more than ever that this is on the radar for all of our customers and then the other application that you also get as part of the more premium workplace service delivery suite and offering is move management. So I know we just talked about this a moment ago, but again, this is what helps you drive those moves of employees. And we had the example of eliminating the floor and kind of needing to move employees from one floor to another. So now that we've kind of clarified what applications are available per solution, the next thing I wanna talk about specifically is uh, a piece of overlap that's very important to consider as part of implementation conversations. So across our safe workplace suite and our workplace service delivery suite, we have workplace safety management. And this is a very important call out to make because within safety management, we actually have a module called space administration. And within space administration, you have the ability to really um, store your space and room hierarchy. So what this means is that each space and room follows that hierarchy that we see here on the slide. So at the highest level, it starts with a region. Um, an example region would be Americas. It then goes down to a more granular level of site. So another example here would be North America. And then you can see, I won't read through the list, but it goes all the way down from campus, building, floor, area to space and room. So again, this is that hierarchy and it is replicated in this application of workplace safety management within the space administration module. And so what this specifically means for you is that if you imported space data during your safe workplace implementation, this actually expedites your workplace service delivery implementation. So this is just a quick screenshot preview of what this actually looks like within our application. Um, so again, if you look at the left side of this screenshot, you can see those same fields that I was referring to, region, site, campus, building, and floor. The next thing I wanna talk about is actually how important this space administration data is. In a way, it is very core to many of the applications that are included within the suite. So I've listed a couple of examples here that I wanted to walk through. So space administration surfaces first up in workplace reservation management. So obviously as an employee is making a reservation, that core space data is needed to actually collect the data around what location and space and room that reservation needs to be made within. Um, it also surfaces in workplace indoor mapping. So this is of course providing the visual for that space, but that core space data is absolutely necessary in terms of providing that foundation. It surfaces in workplace case management as well. So let's say you're actually opening up a case that's related to a location. You need to be able to have a picker and specifically select what location that case is about. It applies to workplace visitor management also in the way that you need to collect the information in terms of where the visitor will be arriving and how that correlates to your overall space and location hierarchy. It of course also applies to space management. So you need this core kind of space administration data to then go into those more strategic conversations around how that space is being utilized and what optimizations you may be able to make. And then last but not least, it absolutely also applies to workplace move management. So as an employee, let's say you're in that form that I was talking about that exists on our employee center and you're selecting where you are today versus where you want to be, that's one way that it surfaces. And of course, for the workplace or admin team, that's also relevant in terms of planning and coordinating that move as well. The next thing I want to talk about in the context of implementations is a couple of resources that we have specifically to help expedite your workplace service delivery implementation. So we have an assortment of starter stories and workbooks that have been captured to help you really create your requirements for all of our different workplace service delivery features and functionality. Um, and these are actually available in Now Create. We'll talk a little bit more about what Now Create is in a moment, but if you haven't heard of it, it is, is a gold mine of resources that has a lot of um, implementation specific uh, assets. And so again, the specific things that I wanted to point out are our starter stories and our workplace service delivery workbooks. Um, so first up, I want to talk about the stories. So many of you who are um, familiar with this space and have gone through implementations are, of course, very familiar with stories, but these are what you use to define your requirements and configure various ServiceNow applications. And so what we've done is we've delivered some starter stories to help you get started, and these also include sample acceptance criteria. So this is something that you can use as your baseline, as your blueprint, and then edit to meet your business requirements. The other thing that we've done is we have workbooks. So these directly correlate to those starter stories. And these workbooks are actually created in Microsoft Excel to help you easily capture some of those more complex details of your requirements. And again, this is completed as part of that end-to-end -end story. 
So again, if you are not already aware of these great starter stories and workbooks, please go check them out on Now Create. They will definitely expedite your implementation and help you get started in the collection of your requirements. All right, the other thing that we wanted to talk through are some of the other resources that are available. And for this part, I'm gonna pass it back over to Jordan. Wonderful, Allison. Thank you so much for all of that good information and walking through application by application. I was uh, excited to see that there was some, you know, not, not as familiar, you know, with in the total, but likely knowing just a little bit that's there. So we wanted to leave you with a couple core resources um, that not only have across the entire ServiceNow products in its portfolios, but also have individual pages for each of the products or licensees that you may hold. The first of which is our product documentation site. This is another gold mine of great information. There are a team of huge technical writers that support us here at ServiceNow, and for each release, they go through in great detail to make sure that they're capturing all the good information, anything that might be needed in regard to that product specifically, and that's all stored there within the product documentation site with some of the more nitty-gritty details and some of that technical information that you may have questions in regard to. The second of which is community. And community is a great place to collaborate and even ask questions and engage with other customers. Even folks like Allison and myself are on there and, and catering and answering questions, posting blogs. And this is a place that we have forums as well for each and every single one of our products. Earlier in the chat, I had posted the WSD community forum, and I see that I've also been helped with posting some of those links into the chat once again, so thank you. And essentially within the community, you can look for things like getting started. You can also look for something like the what's new blogs for every release that's gonna include things like screenshots and demos and some of that additional information that will also link you to other places that might have more detailed documentation that comes into play. And it's just a great way to really, again, foster that community among customers or even people curious, um, like some folks that are here joining us on the call. And last but not least, Allison spoke to this slightly earlier about Now Create, and this is a wonderful place to come with that deep gold mine of information. This is where implementation documents will be, additional getting started guides, those workbooks, and really is one of ServiceNow's best kept secrets, we like to say. So be sure to go between all of these different resources, check them out, learn a little bit more. Um, there is just so much good content that's been out there from experts far, far greater than even ourselves that are available to you uh, today to be able to access. Great, awesome. Thank you for walking through those additional resources. Like Jordan mentioned, these are all great and highly recommend if you're not already acquainted specifically with our community to definitely subscribe to that. Um, once you visit, there's a button that you'll see in the top right, and that'll actually alert you of new content and new questions and answers that have been posted. So great resources. Um, now we're gonna jump to our Q&A. And to get us started, I was kind of just perusing the chat and uh, looking at our Q&A panel. And we already have a question um, from David. So it says, for the new mapping functionality for clients that already have mapped in, are they encouraged to migrate or can they start with stay with mapped in? So great question. Um, and the answer is that you as a client have a choice. You have two choices, of course, and it sounds like you're kind of weighing both of those. Your um, first choice would be to continue leveraging Mapton. That integration and collaboration between uh, Mapton and our application will continue, and you can continue to use those maps. Um, or you can decide to migrate to workplace indoor mapping and start to leverage that native capability that we talked about that was the result of that uh, acquisition that we had made. The other thing that I would point out specifically is that um, if you do decide to make that migration, um, feel free to reach out to your account team or any of us here on the ServiceNow side, and we can provide some context and some tips and best practices for how to think about that. But great first question. And that is um, one of the questions. It looks like we just got another question around um, how reservation management actually works with calendar providers. This is another really great question. And um, we have two things that I'd like to cover. So first off, we have a calendar synchronization capability. And what this allows you to do is keep reservation management in sync with your calendar provider. So whether it's Outlook or whether it's Google Calendar. So that means if a reservation is made in reservation management, that's also appearing in employee calendars and vice versa. Um, the other thing that I'd like to point out is that we have an Outlook add-in. 
And the nice thing about this is it actually allows, if you are using Outlook at your organization, for you to enable an add-in that appears directly within Outlook. And what that allows you to do if you're an employee is actually reserve a space and even add on those services that we talked about earlier. So that means within that add-on, you'd be able to make your reservation for the space. And if you decide that you have a service that is also necessary as part of that reservation, that's something that you'd be able to directly add within that Outlook add-in. All awesome. right, Allison, there's yeah. another question that just came in and it said, could you please dive in a little bit further about the difference of the indoor mapping capabilities versus the studio you mentioned? Absolutely, yes, another great question. So workplace indoor mapping is kind of that name for that overall application. And of course it, it serves dual purposes. It kind of has things that would help your employees navigate within the workplace and wayfind. But behind that, in that map admin persona, we have that map studio specifically. And so what that allows you to do is actually create those mapping experiences. Um, it's very slick, it's a pretty guided experience, but basically what that allows you to do is once you get into Map Studio from our platform, you're able to start importing your applicable files to create those mapping experiences. And so as a map admin in studio, you'd import that file. You'd even be able to designate like which layers of your CAD file should be visible on the map. A lot of times certain customers have, um, you know, layers that are not applicable for import. Maybe you have a layer that has all of your HVAC and that's obviously not necessary for visibility in the map. You'd be able to filter that out and also do things like manage your points of interest. So a point of interest could be a fire extinguisher. It could be a restroom. The list goes on. And it also allows you to create those directions from navigating from one space to another. And so that's what really powers that wayfinding and kind of navigation that we were talking about earlier. The other thing that I would absolutely encourage you to do is attend that next webinar that we plugged. And again, I'll actually progress to the next slide in case you didn't catch that at the beginning. We have an upcoming session, um, actually uh, July 19th, specifically dedicated to Map Studio. And I'm, I'm personally very much looking forward to this session. A couple of my colleagues will be leading it and they'll be going live into studio to give a demo and actually import things. So another great question. All right, I'm just checking out our chat and looking at our Q&A panel. It looks like we are caught up with questions. I'd like to give a quick shout out. It looks like some of our attendees are actually actively implementing um, a couple of our applications. So that's awesome. And we have some people specifically looking forward to the July 19th session. We will be excited to see you back for that. All right, well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining today. Again, like we mentioned at the beginning, the recording will be available, and please keep your eyes peeled for that survey about today's content. Thank you again. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thanks, Allison.